Hello, my name is Blake Lichtenberg, and for our 8th grade project, we chose genetic diseases in athletes. A genetic disease is a condition or disorder caused by changes in a, or abnormalities in a person's DNA. Our project was about athletes who have genetic diseases and how they can cope with that disease. For our subtopic, we focus on a specific genetic disease and a famous athlete who had been diagnosed with that disease. For our interview, we interviewed two genetic counselors from Flower Hospital, Pennsylvania about each of our subtopics. Epilepsy is a genetic disease that causes people to have unannounced seizures. It's a very dangerous disease that can harm anyone that is diagnosed. Some common symptoms include headaches, depression, fatigue, or amnesia. Epilepsy was first discovered by Hans Berger in the 1920s. Sports can be a problem for some people with it, but if you always have it, medical attention nearby if help is needed. Epilepsy and Florence Griffith Joyner. A famous athlete with epilepsy was Florence Griffith Joyner. Joyner passed away from a seizure in her sleep on September 21st, 1998. She was an Olympic athlete that was just starting to make her mark. This shows epilepsy is a very harmful and dangerous disease. Hi, my name is Anthony Brolin from my subtopic. I did hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. HCM is a heart disease where the heart becomes abnormally thick. Because the heart is thick, it makes it harder to pump blood. This leads to symptoms like shortness of breath, chest pains, sudden fainting, and an irregular heartbeat. Because of the heart problem, there are extreme risks at playing physical and active sports or activities. The condi condition can't be cured, but there are treatments that can help. When people get diagnosed, they're usually in their 20s or, or older. That's when symptoms get more serious. This is because the heart muscle gets bigger as time goes on. An athlete by the name of Hank Gathers was diagnosed with HCM mid-basketball season after he collapsed on the court. He played for Loyola Marymount, a Division I school. Although one day in a tournament in 1990, he had more, a more devastating collapse. This collapse was more serious and required more medical attention. Later that night, he died in the ER. Later that night, he died in the ER after being rushed to the hospital. Hi, my name is Ryan Smith and my subtopic is sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is an inherited disease in which the red blood cells in the body have an abnormal crescent shape that blocks small blood vessels and die faster than normal red blood vessels. Sickle cell disease is discovered by Walter Clement Noel in 1904. Because sickle cells die much faster than normal red blood cells, the body is not able to produce more cells in time and this results and having sharp pain in the area of the blood clot. Athletes diagnosed with sickle cell disease are unable to continue the sport being played because the result in them continuing could lead them having sharp pains and inherited pediatric bone marrow failure that cannot be cured. <clears throat> the athlete that I chose is Ryan Clark. Ryan Clark is a safety in the NFL for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Playing in the NFL, Ryan traveled in to Denver to play against the Denver Broncos. Playing sports in Denver is very challenging for people with sickle cell disease because altitude is high. When altitude is high, breathing gets heavier and the blood, the blood clots start. Clark was injured in 2007 playing in Denver. Ryan Clark suffered from splenic infarction and returned to football one year later. He played 13 seasons in the NFL and was injured again on February 18, 2015. Clark then decided to pursue his new dream of becoming a sports analyst and now started a program for sickle cell disease awareness, research, treatment, and programming in Pittsburgh. Hi, my name is Zane Zyder. For my subtopic to go along with my presentation, I chose Marfan syndrome and Isaiah Austin's experience with this disease. Marfan syndrome is a genetic disorder involving the body's connective tissue. Marfan was first discovered by Antoine Marfan in 1896 when examining a young girl with long fingers and limbs. This syndrome most commonly affects the heart, eyes, blood vessels, and skeleton. 
Although it is very hard to play sports of high intensity, few athletes are able to play sports like basketball, volleyball, etc. This syndrome affects about one in three to five thousand people worldwide and is a required question on the Ohio physical examination. The main and most common and most deadly problem along with Marfan is aortic enlargement. This is when the aorta, the main artery in the heart, gets enlarged. As a result, this can lead to the tear in the aorta. Some of the main symptoms include aortic enlargement and other heart problems, scoliosis, long fingers and limbs, and, inc and increased hypermobility of muscles. Like previously mentioned, Isaiah Austin is one of the most prominent, prominent athletes with, along with Marfan syndrome. Isaiah was born on October 25th, 1993. He was diagnosed just days before the 2014 NBA draft and was declared ineligible to play by the league. He, was, he has most of the main symptoms of Marfan, including a detached retina in the eye, aortic enlargement in the heart, and long limbs and fingers. Isaiah is currently playing professional basketball from the Ningjiang Monkey King in the Chinese Basketball Association. But will, it will always be his dream to play in the NBA. After leaving Baylor University as a sophomore, after his sophomore year to play in the NBA, and after he was declared ineligible to play by the league, he founded the Isaiah Austin Foundation. This organization is designed for the awareness and research of Marfan and, that, and the people affected by it. His mission to those with this disease is to be able to dream again. For our action project, we went to Turnstone Center for Children and Adults with Disabilities in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Turnstone's mission is to empower people with disabilities to achieve their highest potential by providing comprehensive services and programs. We want to Turnstone experience many ways that people with disabilities work out and what sports they can play. When we got there, we didn't know what to expect, but as we got our tour, we learned that Turnstone really does create possibilities for them because they get to step into our shoes and play sports we play with different moderations. Every sport I heard about, I've never heard about, rather than wheelchair basketball. They had special re renovations for many different groups of people in there. The one that stuck out to me the most was that they made hallways wider for people in wheelchairs so they could turn around easier. When we were there, we interacted with kids our age who were practicing for wheelchair basketball. They let us, they let us get in the wheelchairs and scrimmage the team. It was a great experience for us to play the team and see how much fun it was, even though they beat us by quite a bit. They were training for the Special Olympics, so they were obviously skilled and experienced it. Turnstone was a great experience to see how they helped people with disabilities. Our group decided to interview Ms. Kelly Morris and Ms. Arlene Button. Ms. Kelly Morris and Ms. Arlene Button are genetic counselors at Flower Hospital in Sylvania. We interviewed them mainly about our diseases and how they affected athletes wanting to participate, but can't because they're a genetic disease.
factors or could it be same thing when you look at demographics of a basketball team, for example, or of a football team, what ethnic ratios are you seeing on that team? A lot of times we're seeing black African-American athletes at a sometimes higher frequency than Caucasian or European. So how do we prevent this? What are we gonna do about this? So when we know about it, and it's actually going on through a family and a person has a genetic condition, unfortunately they're gonna to be told to avoid competitive sports. So anything that is really gonna get their heart rate up, like endurance training, weightlifting, sprinting, any big contact sports, um, like football, all of those are gonna be, in theory, pretty big no-nos. And that, that's really hard, especially because a person might be aspiring to become a professional athlete or reach a collegiate level, and this is identified maybe when they're in high school and they are playing basketball and collapse. Mm -hmm. And th those are really hard things for the student athlete, that family, to wrap their head around and, and try and decide, okay, maybe the life plan that I had isn't really the best one for my overall health. Um, Treatment-wise, it's incredible incredibly variable. So sometimes it's managed by medication and that's not going to fix the thickness here. It's just going to allow the heart to function okay. Sometimes, not often, it's treated by In conclusion, our group researched genetic diseases in athletes. We found that some people with genetic diseases can continue to play at an extremely high level. However, for some athletes with genetic diseases, modifications may be needed with the equipment or with the game itself in order for the athletes to fully participate. In the future, we hope to promote a facility similar, similar to Turnstone in the Toledo area to meet the needs of athletes with special needs. Thank you for watching our presentation. Questions? I mean, it was just different, like, learning how they had, just like, how people with, that don't have their disabilities have to play. I just thought it was great that seeing, although they had, like, disabilities and stuff, they are still, like, just as happy as anyone else playing basketball, even though they had to, like, play in wheelchairs and stuff. It was just a great experience. I mean, it was actually kind of fun in the wheelchairs. It was kind of hard, though.
uh, yeah, so there's, like, track for them, too. And, like, if you have, like, a disability in your legs, then they make, like, this cart, and you could just, like, push yourself on the track thing, and they make, like, there's, like, a variety of sports that they make for them.